Good morning. Um, thank you very much for watching all these videos. And don't forget, if you see something that you like, um, please share and tag with your friends. The more the merrier. Um, I have an awful lot of requests for, for dishes to, to do for people. I will, I will get around to them eventually. Um, I'm trying to keep the videos a bit shorter now. So rather than taking up maybe two minutes and all the ingredients, I'm going to put them up the day before in advance with the menu so people can get ready for them. And uh, I'm open to any suggestions to make this an easier watch it. So feel free to text me. So uh, today I'm, I'm boning out the chicken for the Southern Fried and I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm just going to do this half here and it's just yeah, the other side, so it'll just quicken up things. Um, so now, right, I have a medium chicken. I have them washed and everything. I have my knife, very sharp. No business trying to bone out a chicken with a blunt knife. You'll only do damage. We start off now, I hope you can see this. So first you pull out the wing and you cut off the tip of the wing. Now when you're cutting off uh, at joints in, in any meat really, but chickens too, you, st you just search, you put the knife on it and you just press it down and it'll cook very easily. So now, so we take the, the knife and we run it through the leg, just at the side of the breast there and run it down. What we do with here is we turn the leg inside out until the bone is showing. You can see the leg bone, the thigh bone there. So then I turn the chicken upside down, getting out the oyster and all around. And that's my leg. Now, the breast. Now, I always use a chicken, I prefer to use a, a whole chicken because the skin is on it. And in this dish, this is where all the flavor is. Everything is in the skin, it means so much. Now, feel free to buy um, shop bought one, um, fillets or whatever mm -hmm. store and crumb them. I, I just wanted to show you how to bone a chicken in case anyone ever wanted it. So now you just feel for the backbone there, you'll feel it, and you put your knife, and again, you just run it along the you bone. Feel the bone, and as long as your knife is feeling the bone, you can't go to, you can hear that noise there. Now there's a little bone here, and you just cuff around that, or bit down on that. That's there now. And you run it down as close to the breastbone as possible. And again, you'll feel the joint here on the knuckle, and you just run your knife through, and that's it. Now I have the chicken prepared here, so I'm getting ready to put it for the southern fried into pieces. So now again, you put your finger there and you'll feel the joint. And when you get the joint, you put the knife on top of it, and it'll just nicely run through bit nicer than that but that's good enough so you have your drumstick and your tie now here's your breast piece here so first you want to remove this here just the fillet and I keep that separate now I want to have a wing piece and a breast piece so for what we do is I run the knife slantways across it gives an effect of a bigger piece as you'll see what I mean now there's your wing piece and there's your breast. So you have four good pieces there and your fillet. Now I just put a bit of seasoning on them now and we get ready to soak them now, overnight. Good for smoking chicken is very, very simple. I'm using some buttermilk. Now I want to use three quarters of this this time because I need a quarter of a litre for something else, and I'll show it I'll show you. So, you see the buttermilk there, it's nice and thick. No, that's that. And a bit of salt and pepper. And there it is. Now, what we do is, we put the chicken pieces in that for 24 hours. We cover it, put them, cover it, and put them into the fridge for 24 hours. And then they'll be ready to coat with the southern fried mix. 
Next up now, I'm going to prepare the tobacco onions as well. Similar it's mix. Very... I'll show you what to do now. Like the chicken, the pickled uh, cucumber has to be done 24 hours in advance as well. So I'll just give you a quick one on that. First, uh, I, I just want to cut a few strings off it. You probably won't have a cutter like Don't that. Don't worry about it if you haven't. So what I want to do there is just like that. Okay. Now, for my pickled slices, I'm just using like that. that peeler and I go to an edge that's not cut and I pull it down the full length. Okay. And do another one there now. And that's what you want, like that. That's my cucumber ready now. So, first thing I need to do here, I need to add a tablespoonful of sea salt. Now you have to use sea salt. The reason for this is I want to take all the, the out of the cucumber. Cucumber has a very high moisture content. So I'm just going to get a good teaspoon of that and sprinkle it over, toss it in that and about 30 minutes or maybe just leave an hour just to be sure it'll get an awful lot of the moisture. I'm going to make the pickle brine and what you want for this now is 50 grams of sugar and 200 gram, milliliters of white wine vinegar. Now we need to dissolve the sugar. So all the sugar in a bowl and just quarter of the liquid. That's plenty there, just like that. We'll keep the rest there for afterwards. Now I'm just gonna bang that in the microwave seconds and that'll dissolve the sugar. Now as you can see, the brine is ready. It's all clear there. So we're going to add our cool brine, brine, wine, and it'll just help it cool it and put it in the fridge to cool down. I just add the cool liquid and it helps to cool it down a bit quicker. And ideally you'd put it in the fridge. So I'll go off now and I'll drain the, the cucumber and I'm going to pass it with uh, some kitchen towels. Now, that's it there. Take the excess moisture out. Well, you're not going to get them completely dry, but just to get the excess moisture out of them. Working on them, it just doesn't have to be cucumber. And that's that's it now. So we cover that and we leave it in the fridge for 24 hours till you're ready to serve it. I have prepared um, another mix, the exact same as what I made for the chicken uh, with the remaining buttermilk and lemon juice and salt and pepper and now I'm going to finally slice the onions. Now it, this is the same as I did the other day for saute but thinner even if possible. So I'm just going to cut off the end bit there and I'll do that afterwards. So again you, you have it against the front of your finger so you just need very as thin as possible. And then when you get down to the end there, you just turn it around and do it the same there. And to break it into nice thin pieces. And you leave that in the mix for 24 hours, the same as the chicken. And that's all I can do today. So tomorrow again, um, welcome to day two of the Southern Fried Chicken. Now everything should be ready in your fridge for doing the chicken, the onions, they're all marinated. So the first thing I'm going to do up today now is the red slaw. And it's very simple, I just have a quarter head of uh, red cabbage here. And you want to take out the stalk there at the end, so you just get rid of that. And then you cut it half out, just to fit into your blender and our, your processor. I'm going to do it in a processor because I want it nice and fine. So I just do that there now and bring over my processor and I'm that's that. Now my cabbage is ready so I'm just going to dice a bit of apple just to add a bit of sweetness into the cabbage, into the slaw. It's really nice. Um, not too fine, just kind of the size of the pieces here. Just 
that kind of size of a piece. And you just put that in. I'll just get this done here now. And you break it up. So next up, um, a bit of salt and pepper. And a drop of lime juice or lemon, whatever you fancy. Plenty in there. And your mayonnaise. And you just stir that together. Light purple colour. I'll just show you what it's like now. Now, and that's it ready. So you just put that in your cover and put it in your fridge until you're ready to use it. Now I want to get in to the start on the, the triple fried chips. So I have my potatoes put up there, uh, nice even bite sizes, very simple. And uh, what I do is I parboil them now in boiling water for about five minutes. And then I take them off and drain them and put them on a tray and put them in the fridge for 30 minutes where we get ready for phase two of, of the action. Right, we're at the coating now of the seasoning for the, the southern fried chicken. So, right, I have 300 grams of flour here and I have all my dry powders. I got them ready there, the flour. Get a spoon here. Now we just mix them in like that. You can smell all the flavors there on Really good. Just, you want everything just out even. Now this that I'm doing. So it's a double dip dish that I hope to produce. Right, okay, so you get your chicken piece and you, I'll just show you that seed. Now you have your chicken piece there and you drain off the excess water or the excess buttermilk and then we put it into the... Now you shake that round and you just pat it very gently, turn it round, pat it very gently. And I have a, a tray line here already, and I'm just gonna put it into that. In that for about an hour just to relax. You can do it less if you want, like don't worry about, you know, don't hold me to all these things. You know, if you want to just fire away and cook it there. I'm doing phase two of the, the triple fried chips. So that's them there now, they're cooled down in the fridge. And I have some Real butter there, a half pound of it. And I heated it up in the microwave to a fairly good heat. Now you want it fairly hot. So I'm just gonna pour that in there, into the potato, and mix around, coating everything evenly. This is the good bit. This is where, this, <laughs> this whole menu is complete over overkill on everything. Like, enough guilt Catholics into confession for a month. So now you just put that on the tray and you evenly space them out and put them into an oven for 10. Well, now to do the second uh, coating of the chicken. So for the second coating, I'm using the same buttermilk, but I'm going to add an egg to it. I just want to, it, 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 it helps the chicken to, to coat it a bit better, it's, it sticks a bit better. So I'll just whisk in that there now. And I got my chicken there. And just a quick, and, in, and then I get the flour, the flour again as well I need it. And just a quick dip into the chicken, or into the buttermilk. Drain off the eggs, and just, Again, a light coating. Shake off the excess flour, and that's it. Now I have the 
The last piece of the jigsaw before we go cooking uh, is the tobacco onions. Now I have them here, they were been soaking in the buttermilk all night. And I have a similar mix to the, well, I have a different one, because you don't want to be tossing vegetables in flour and seasoning where there was raw chicken. So, okay, now this is a last minute thing. This will be the last thing you do. You'll have your fryer on and everything at this so stage. So we just take out the onions and sprinkle them in the flour, not too many at a time, because you'll find that the, and, you just want them lightly cooked. Shake off the excess flour and they come out like that. And they're ready for deep frying now and they only take a second to deep fry. We're ready now for cooking the chicken and I have my oil here in the pan, roughly three quarters of a liter of vegetable oil. Make sure you don't use olive oil for this. It's just not suitable. It uh, makes it bitter. Be very careful that you don't get it too hot. You don't want to burn the house down. So. To know that it's hot enough, you know, obviously you put your hand over and you feel the heat, but if you put in, uh, just say, one of the, a piece of the onion, and top, that, you know well it's ready. So you can see it there, yeah. It's hot enough now. No, I, don't, I don't want to cook that now, I'll just take it out. Okay, so now, let me drain off and put in the oven and to finish off. So you see now these are the come out really nice and crispy. That's perfect. Okay, I'll get back to you now when they're cooked and uh, we'll finish off the triple fried chips and the onions. Now that the third uh, phase of the yes. chip fridge cooling down at the moment now is obviously just to deep fry them and it only takes about a minute. But you want your oil up at about 180 degrees for that in your deep fat fryer, not this pan. Right, I have my chips here now ready to cook. I have the oil up to 180 degrees. So I'm just going to drop them in there, cook them for maybe two minutes so they're nice and crispy. Just give them an add as well. So they're cooking there nicely. And I'm going to do the onions after that, after this. Onions now are next. So for the onions, I take out the basket because you just want to toss them in it loosely and the basket just gets in your way and it probably stick together. So you just sprinkle them in singly if you can. And they only take about, about a minute, just toss them out. Sorry now the foggy place is fogging up. <laughs> now, finished. Um, you've got your double dip southern fried chicken. You have your triple cooked chips, tobacco onions, and a red excellent cucumber. You can see the nice pink coming out through the cucumber. That's exactly the way I wanted it. So I hope you have so, as much fun eating that now as I had preparing it. Enjoy.